If you've been anywhere on the internet recently, chances are you've seen some AI generated content or used a chatbot yourself. AI use is rapidly increasing. From research papers to AI internet slop, everyone's using it almost daily. With the rapid increase in usage, many have become concerned about the environmental impacts of the technology, and one topic has dominated the conversation, water use. Tons of different figures have been thrown around in the news and online, leaving many to wonder how thirsty is AI and how much water does it actually use. So in this video, we're going to unpack AI's water impact, how the technology actually uses water, and what truly matters for reducing it. AI is a super general term, but for our purposes, we'll be talking about prompting a model, the data center which stores its memory, and the chips that power that data center. First, there's the question of how an individual AI prompt or query uses water. You may have seen Sam Altman suggest that a single AI prompt uses roughly 1 15th of a teaspoon of water. Many tech companies and AI companies don't give out a ton of data around the environmental impact of the technology or the methodology used to calculate a figure such as this. OpenAI has not publicly disclosed how they got to this number. Although there are researchers and published studies from companies like Google or Morgan Stanley which provide a starting point for understanding AI's environmental impact. They reveal that Altman's estimate represents only the marginal cost of a single isolated query. By only focusing on one query, you kind of omit how a reasoning model works, which processes complex questions by creating multiple internal follow-up prompts behind the scenes. This can multiply the water and energy cost of a single prompt by as much as 15 times. Focusing on a single marginal prompt also excludes model training as well as chip manufacturing. Without comprehensive and transparent data from the companies themselves, it's really tough to understand the scale of AI's water consumption. Next are the data centers themselves. These are the large facilities that store and process the data used to train AI models and run them in real time. Water is used mainly for cooling the servers and indirectly through the electricity generation required to power the data center. And finally, AI uses water in the chip design and manufacturing as super high quality distilled water, also called ultra pure water, is used to clean and rinse the elements of a chip before the layers are connected. The type and purity of water matters a lot when talking about AI water use, as we'll see later on in the video. But before we get into the details around AI and amount of water per query, let's try to get some realistic numbers around how much water AI actually uses. The data you see now is from Andy Maisley, the head of Effective Altruism in Washington, D.C., who's an environmentalist who's compiled as accurate data as possible around how much water an AI prompt actually uses. So I think from Andy's research, it's pretty clear that some of the figures that we see online are a little bit misleading. But before I dove into Andy's research, I did what most people do today. I asked the culprits themselves, all the popular AI models, ChatGPT, Claude, Grok, Gemini, the same question. How much water does AI actually use and is this a real problem? And we got a wide range of answers back and it quickly became clear that the estimates are all over the place. Some figures came back as broad ranges like 312 billion to 760 billion. And that's similar to saying you drove somewhere between Philly to Pittsburgh, which is around 300 miles or Washington DC to Jacksonville, Florida, which is like 700 miles. At that point, the number stops becoming informative because it's such a wide range. It's also important to note that the more granular you get, the more your base assumptions matter. So let's take a look at just the water per query numbers. I put all of them in tablespoons slash milliliters to match Sam Altman's figures, and you can see the range again is massive. And that difference becomes even more significant when you scale it up. OpenAI reports that users send over 2.5 billion prompts to ChatGPT every single day. Depending on which estimate you use, you end up with vastly different conclusions about the water use. This is why a bottom-up per query approach is so challenging and often misleading. Individual prompts aren't the real issue. The real impact comes from billions or trillions of queries at scale combined with large data centers and energy intensive infrastructure. So instead of focusing on a single prompt, let's take a look at what actually matters when evaluating AI's water use and how we can measure it in a way that leads to better decisions. So what actually matters in regards to AI and water use? Well, first it's the location and source of water. Many data centers are built in areas where water scarcity is already a real issue. The new addition of the center strains an already strained water system. Additionally, the source of that water is also important. For example, straining a municipal water system for AI use isn't fair to local residents. We did make a video about the topic of AI use and local residents. Feel free to check it out if you're interested. Data centers rely on this municipal water supply as it's already been highly purified and processed, which sets us up nicely for our next factor, which is water quality and purity. Many AI cooling systems require high quality purified water. 
Some data centers, however, are beginning to use recycled or wastewater, and in many cases this water can be reused multiple times, which does reduce the overall impact and strain on the water system. But highly purified water is more energy intensive, more expensive, and often scarcer than lower quality alternatives. And finally is efficiency. A common misconception around AI water use is that using water means it disappears. This can also lead to misleading statistics and double counting. For electricity generation in particular, most sources estimate that only 2-3% to of water is lost in evaporation, with the rest being returned to the system. Data center cooling, however, is very different. In many cooling systems, a much larger share of water, often more than half, is lost through evaporation. This is why cooling, not electricity generation, accounts for the majority of AI's direct water impact. AI companies are also financially incentivized to improve efficiency. Water-based cooling is currently one of the cheapest options available, but if a cheaper or more efficient technology emerges, companies will adopt it quickly. If you made it this far, you're probably wondering what these numbers mean and if anything should be done about AI's water use. The key takeaway here isn't that AI is going to dry up the world's water or that you should stop using it completely. It's about responsible data center placement. Where those data centers are built and what water they use matters a lot. On a global scale, total global water use by AI data centers is estimated at roughly 260 billion gallons per year in 2025. But by comparison, American corn production alone uses around 20 trillion gallons of water annually, nearly 80 times more than every AI server in the world combined. Data centers also support far more than funny AI generated images, memes, or just the chatbots me and you use. They power communication, research, finance, healthcare, and nearly every digital service modern society depends on to function. That means the real challenge is building them responsibly. Companies will naturally gravitate towards the cheapest cooling methods available, and right now that means water. The solution isn't pretending the problem doesn't exist, but recognizing it and innovating ways to reduce strain on local water systems. No community should lose access to clean, reliable water simply because they live near a data center. Water is essential to human life, and protecting public access has to be our priority. There are already tons of ideas being explored, from alternative cooling technologies to more efficient designs and even unconventional concepts like underwater data centers or space data centers. The impacts of these approaches are still being evaluated, but that's how progress happens. We test, we measure, and we improve. If you found this video at all interesting, please drop a comment with your thoughts and please consider subscribing. And as always, thank you for watching.